about, what was it, a couple weeks ago, we hosted a virtual online wealth building seminar. Did I get the name of that right? Close, Close enough, enough, for Close sure. Close enough. Yeah. And the, the idea behind it was to talk through all different ways of investing, right? To talk through uh, two-year flips, uh, long-term rentals, short-term rentals. What what do you feel like was some of the key questions that you got asked that came out of that that would be valuable for the audience? Yeah, and, and just real quick, so everybody knows, th this was a private seminar for our past clients and friends, okay? So this wasn't a public deal, right? We, we, we constantly are trying to add value beyond the sale for our clients and friends, right? So this isn't something where the public was, was invited or where we were had anything for sale, right? We we're just Correct. trying to educate and help our clients and our friends. So we were talking in a really, you know, semi-casual, comfortable way about all of the ways that you can invest. We focused on four primary ones, and I'll just recap what Ian said. You know, we talked about short-term flips, which is what most people think of when we say flip. And then we talked about long-term flips, which is what we call the two-year flip, which is where it's at least a two-year process and there's tax-free profit. And then we talked about short-term rentals, which was probably the more interesting new topic, which is more of your vacation rental, VRBO, Airbnb, home away type deal. And then of course we talked about long-term rentals, which is more traditional what people think of when they think of rentals. I buy a house or I don't sell my own my old house and I buy a new one and I rent that one out to a family or an individual who lives there long term, right? Yep. So we talked about all those things. The questions we got mostly uh, and, and really most of them were were pretty direct. You know, some of them were about mortgage, you know, can I get a loan on a house to flip it? Can I get a loan on a house, on a beach house that I want to rent out 50 months, 50 weeks a year and use a couple of weeks? Most of those questions are simple answers are simply, yes, you can, you know, go to patrickglaris.com, a uh, little bit higher down payment on an investment loan, slightly higher interest rate, but still really attractive interest rates in this market. Some of the more complex questions were about you know, where should I buy a short-term rental, right? That's a little bit tougher question to answer, but we can discuss that here. Yep. Um, and then some really exciting ones about, you know, when's the right time for me to invest and in what market is the right kind of market for me to invest. So happy to answer a couple of those real quick and then certainly take some follow-ups. In regard to the short-term rental, let's just refer to them as vacation rentals. They're not all vacation rentals. Some of it is for business travel or there's a lot of people right now looking for a place that they could go rent for a week or two while they get water back on at their house or something like that. Yep. But the bulk of what people are excited to do in that category is vacation rentals, right? I'd like to buy a property in the mountains, at a lake, on the beach, you know, near a river, whatever, near something pretty or relaxing and enjoy that myself two, three, four, five times a year and be able to rent it out the rest of the year to at least pay for it mm -hmm. to at least break even. And of course, ideally generate a substantial profit. Anything in between breaking even and a huge profit is usually acceptable. Um, we have found that doing that really allows you to open up your geography to either the entire world or at least the entire world where you can travel frequently and relatively affordably without without it being a burden or without you feeling like you'll never do that. Mm -hmm. um, so that means, you know, beaches within a day's drive, uh, mountains within a quick Southwest flight, you know, something like that. So obviously we're not going to cover every potential destination there, but those are some of those thoughts. Hey, if I could jump on a flight that's less than a couple of hundred dollars, then I would do that, you know, every so often. Or if I could drive there in less than eight hours, I would do that every so often. So you're thinking about places like, you know, the panhandle of Florida, the, the quickest drive to Florida or Galveston uh, or Port Natchez or, you know, something where there's good hunting or something like that. Right. Um, Bridgeport, you know, places like that. Lake Travis, you know, any of the lakes right around DFW, yeah. uh, like Texoma, places that you could use as often as you're able. And then there's a decent chance someone's going to rent it. And now that's the last point I'll make on that. And we can move on. But you know, if you bought something on Lake Tawakany, I love Lake Tawakany, but it's nowhere near the destination 
that Durango, Colorado or Pensacola, Florida or uh, Lake of the Ozarks is, right? It's just, it's not the same. So you might not be able to rent that out as much, right? So we would help a buyer think through those things before they buy. Just because you want to vacation there does not mean anybody else does or enough other people do to help you break even. Exactly. Just because a ton of people want a vacation there doesn't mean we can help you purchase a property affordably enough to be profitable. So there's a few obvious factors there. Insurance and things like that factor in. HOA dues and things like factor that in. You know, you, you're you going through this newer to the process, but you know, feel free to share any couple of nuggets that you guys have picked up. Yeah, we're five months into it now. So I think, you know, one of the big things is knowing the time of year that you buy and what obstacles you're going to face, right? So we knew we were buying ours at the very beginning of the off season. You, you can't make profit during that time. You're trying to limit your loss during that time. Uh, if you can break even, fantastic. Mm -hmm. If you can lose two, three hundred dollars a month, you're in a great spot because yep. it means you're still renting. You just can't charge enough to be able to break even. The key begins for us. March will be profit. That'll be our beginning of profit time. Yep. And they have a beach property just to be yeah, clear. Yeah, beach property. So when, when March begins to hit all the way through probably September, you're going to be making your profit to cover those off season losses. Right. And that's something that is really important to understand because you have to make sure you have the funds available right. to be able to to leverage that, to, to handle that. And we always tell people when you're investing in any way whatsoever, really you're starting a business, even if it's mm -hmm. a sole proprietorship and you don't go start an LLC or an S corp or whatever. The reality is you're starting a business is, and starting a business. And this is how businesses run. Yep. There are, whether you're counting on a daily basis, weekly, monthly, quarterly, annual, whatever, there are periods where your expenses might exceed your revenue. Mm -hmm. And there's other periods where hopefully your revenue far exceeds your expenses. And at the end of those periods, whether it be a week, a month, a quarter, a year, whatever, your goal is to be profitable. Now, you can't stack too many days in a row, too many weeks, too many months in a row where you're cash flow negative or you're not profitable. But there are very, very few businesses that are literally net positive profitable every single day in the world of real estate investing, right? Yeah. If you're flipping houses, it's all expenses until it sells. And then you recoup all your expenses. If you're renting and you have to replace an air conditioning unit, well, you didn't make any money that month probably, right? Right. You probably lost three months, four months, five months, sometimes eight or 10 months if it's not a great investment of your cash flow. Yep. And then you're back in, you know, and back in the black. So, no, there's a ton of stuff that goes into it. And yeah. ultimately we, we landed on uh, on Pensacola because we went down there and visited and we actually just really liked it. Yep. And we could see ourselves going down there for several years with the kids the age that they are right. and just enjoying it as a family. My wife just got back from three days there by herself just to kind of get some R&R &R time in and just chill out because it was open for three days. So she yep. jumped on a cheap flight and went down there and you know, good for her. Like yep. that's, that's the benefit of it too. 